Hey, what's up guys? I think each of you has at least once wondered about what settings professional players use in games, or what useful tricks and settings are available in Valorant. And I'm not just talking about graphic settings, but about small details that make the game much more convenient, easier and enjoyable. Today I'll tell you about 20 such useful features. First I'll talk about all the useful tricks and closer to the end I'll cover the settings that improve your FPS and reduce input lag. I hope you'll enjoy this video video and let's get started. I'd like to start with the setting that displays your teammate's equipment. I have turned off its constant display but added a separate bind to call it up as needed. I set up bind to the same button as my voice chat. This is very useful feature because instead of shouting at Sage why she isn't healing you, you can simply see that she doesn't have a heal available because it's on cooldown. And binding it to the same button as voice chat is convenient so that when you start giving some callouts for the round, you immediately see what your team has available. Very often on streams questions like how did you make such disc appear and I sometimes don't even immediately understand what they're asking me about. But this setting removes the bodies of dead players, instead a small disc appears that won't distract you from the game. And it's easier to revive your teammates while playing as Sage because it is easier to find the right player and you can see where they will be rising. So there won't be situations where you're reviving your teammate in front of everyone. The only downside is that sometimes the agent's projection from the disc still slightly obstructs your view, which can be inconvenient, but this doesn't happen often. The next setting is to display blood. You can play with sparks, but blood is easier to see. It provides better contrast and it's much better if you're shooting at a player standing behind the box, as it gives a small advantage, I can say. Set up auto weapon pickup. This is a brilliant setting that many people still don't use. It is very unpleasant to get a knife after using Raze's ultimate or or jet knives while standing right in front of an enemy. To avoid this I recommend turning on automatic equipment of the strongest weapon. And I play with the option to turn off automatic knife equipment. This means that after you use some abilities picking up an orb or placing a spike I won't automatically switch to the knife even if I started placing the spike with it. Another small but pleasant detail is to turn off the constant display of inventory. It will disappear after a few seconds and won't distract you. However the picked up spike will still be highlighted, so you won't miss it. If you're a beginner and might sometimes miss picking up a weapon, it is better to leave this function on. Make sure to understand the minimap, I highly recommend turning off the player display in the center and the static map. You may have seen that some professional players have the player in the center of the map, but then the map is cropped, which is not convenient. Plus, you may need to get used to the rotation of the map, but it will always face the direction you are looking at. When you take a quick glance, you don't want to spend an additional second looking for the player. Also, don't make the map too small. I used to play with a small map, but in the end it was even more distracting and took my eyes off the crosshair. Be sure to enable Usher TF, it's really cool feature that makes in-game sounds more understandable. It'll be easier for you to understand who stepped where, where a sound came from and so on. I talked about the shooting error graph in one of my previous shorts video. This is a relatively new setting that shows you how many degrees your bullet device from the center during simple shooting. If you're heavily clamping down, for example, and while shooting on the move. This way you can understand if you're shooting while running or not, if you sometimes feel like you stopped but the bullets are flying incorrectly. Auto zoom will make your sniper shooting faster and more efficient. You won't be able to perfectly hit the zoom button every time and why bother with that when you can just turn on automatic re-aiming. Disable the number of players watching you. First of all, it will distract you and secondly, personally, it works for me in such a way that I perceive this number as if there are people usually standing over my shoulder and watching whether I make a mistake or not. And this is just silly, because on streams I am being watching by more than 1, 2, 3 or 4 people, but for some reason it works like that for me. In short, I recommend turning it off, as I found it distracting. Tactical notifications in the chat are relatively new but very useful feature, especially in the realities of European ranked games, where few people communicate, provide info or even try to communicate. Even hearing a simple spike being planted on A with text is a useful feature that will keep you informed. Be sure to set the spike button to a different button from using ropes, because if you don't have a split second to set or defuse the spike because of the rope on icebox, you'll curse that rope for the rest of your life. I also recommend setting jump to the mouse wheel, this will make it easier for you to strafe, bunny hop and I think after watching my movement video you understand how useful this can be. You can still leave jump on space 
is to float as jet or to jump on simple object but the mouse will won't hurt. Now let's move on to the settings that will make the game smoother and more enjoyable. Let's start with the simple settings where everything is of course set a minimum. This really changes the game, it makes it more beautiful but eats up a decent amount of FPS. The only thing is when I play it as Viper and Sova I left the textures on medium so it's easier to find lineups and see more map details. Anti-aliasing on 2x because I don't want a too sharp staircases effect and an isotrophic filtering on x4 because I want skins to look decent since I spend money on them, right? Now about FPS limit. Make sure to turn off vertical sync. It increases input lag even though the developers seem to have fixed it. It is still easier to limit through the settings. And I notice this. I have a 280Hz monitor and I set limit to 281 FPS to make everything smooth. But not waste extra PC power. Although I don't know if it works like this, but never mind. Mostly I set the limit because input lag is reduced. Look at this example with and without the limit. Maybe it won't work like this for you if you have 60Hz monitor and your limits are for 61fps, but it is better to check it to yourself. Continuing to talk about input lag, turn on Nvidia Reflex with Boost. This only applies to Nvidia card owners, so I'm sorry AMD users. This thing alone removes delay, it doesn't affect fps. Of course we include direct mouse input to eliminate unnecessary delay, although this function is in beta, it already works reliable. Essentially it sends the signal from your mouse directly to the game, rather than first to the system and then to the game. That's if we're speaking in a very simple terms. In general I recommend using it, especially if you have a high refresh rate mouse. Be sure to play in a full screen mode, not in windowed, as this will greatly affect your input lag and game performance. There are a lot of statistics in Valorant, but you don't need to enable all the available in-game graphics because, believe it or not, they also affect performance and can even eat your FPS. Again, developers say that they fixed it, but it still takes some processing power that you don't need to lose. I don't want to go into too much details about Windows settings because it will take a 2 hour video. The basics are to set everything to performance mode whenever possible and disable the auto startup of any background junk. And if you want to make the game more fun and immersive, increase the digital intensity. Those are the main settings, so write in the comments if you think I missed anything useful. Well, that's all for me. Thank you so much to everyone who watched until the end. See you soon. Bye bye.